Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We've got several issues we want to cover here this afternoon, uh, including Russian troops landing on the ground yesterday in Venezuela. We'll be talking also about the uh, situation in the Gaza Strip. There has been a ceasefire reached. Uh, and also the Bible Block Party, Avi Lipkin, starting this Bible Block Party. I want to be talking about that a little bit. And as well, I want to make a correction on Mark Biltz. And I'll explain to you why. Uh, as we get near the end of the video here today and a little bit of insight about what's coming up in this conference so stay tuned in let's get started right away uh, beginning with Russia Russia we saw this yesterday I didn't report on it quite yet because I was kind of getting trying to get an idea is it Russian military or is this the Wagner group now we kind of know that it seems to be according to John Bolton at least it is the Russian military these are some of the photographs there that have been loaded up on Twitter you can see soldiers on the ground uh, and as well the uh, Russians have also used a uh, let's see I think it's on my next picture there uh, on CNBC when they talk about this the Russian Air Force planes reportedly land in Venezuela carrying troops uh, to bolster up Maduro to keep the US from trying to invade the country now the Russians have also given a stern warning to the United States that they will not tolerate military intervention against their ally uh, as long as Maduro stays in office there that it should be a political process it's the second time Russia has stepped in we saw them step in with Syria with President Bashar al-Assad now they're stepping in to help support Maduro it's kind of interesting to see which way that goes there and this was the other photo I was thinking about this is on um, uh, fortrust.com this is the cargo plane where Russian military equipment is also being offloaded and I don't know maybe if we can blow this up maybe we can kind of get a gauge an idea of what that is on the ground that they're offloading there uh, it doesn't seem to really show for sure we see an 18 wheeler with all kinds of things kind of hidden up underneath the uh, up underneath on the trailer there but we can't really say for sure if this is anti-aircraft defense systems or what are being flown in by by the Russian Federation there to help protect Maduro uh, but this is certainly not something that uh, John Bolton was very happy about and uh, don't know whether or not the United States are going to really exercise all options on the table or not now we have mentioned before that uh, uh, we had had intelligence coming from Israel that there had been boots on the ground. I think it's more along the line of uh, the Mossad and CIA working to overthrow this little tiny nation there. Uh, and they're still planning on doing it. And even as far back as October, we had information that they were going to install a de facto president uh, as part of that move. And we saw that happen with Juan Guaido. And uh, not saying that uh, Maduro is any kind of saint by no means. He's certainly no altar boy. Uh, he's got a lot of his own issues, done a lot of bad things. But nonetheless, it's an internal issue that should be uh, resolved by Venezuelans and not by outside powers. Neither the U.S. nor Russia should be the ones involved in this issue there. Uh, moving on over to Amichai Stein. He is reporting breaking video office of Hamas leader uh, is bomb there let me just back it up just a little bit here and uh, it is totally destroyed uh, in the aftermath I thought the video let's see let me there we go there it goes right there uh, they had bombed the Hamas office there totally destroying this particular building there and as you know there was a rocket fired from Gaza that destroyed a home 75 miles away a homemade rocket they're saying traveled 75 miles destroying a private home as far as I know there were no fatalities there were injuries involved it is a reported the Israelis responded uh, Pr Prime Minister Netanyahu was in the United States meeting with President Trump who was supposed to sign a declaration recognizing the Golan belongs to the Israelis and uh, he uh, was cutting short that meeting in order to go back and to deal with Gaza from what we were understanding there then we have the hearts is reporting live updates Hamas TV Gaza ceasefire reach with Israel bomb shelters are opened across Israel Air Force hits Hamas chief offices and multiple other targets rockets fired at the border communities from Gaza three wounded from rocket strikes still hospitalized 
And uh, of course, there was a, a tremendous uh, retaliation by Israel uh, in response to this one rocket that hit this home that injured Israeli citizens in the rocket attack. Seven people were wounded Monday in an early morning after a house north of Tel Aviv was hit by a rocket fired from Gaza Strip, prompting the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to cut short his visit to Washington and to return to Israel. Local councils and cities near the Gaza border, as well as in the central and northern Israel, opened bomb shelters in preparation for the response to the offensive. Popular Resistance Committee spokesman Mohammed uh, Ilbarim says a great Egyptian effort managed to achieve a ceasefire, but we continue to follow the developments in the field. So we don't know for sure exactly how that is going to go there. Uh, another thing that came up and uh, a sister there on Facebook, and I apologize, I forget the sister's name that sent this to me just moments ago, but I do want to thank her. Uh, for sharing this information with me. This is on CBN News, Christian uh, Broadcast News Network. New political party seeks to end prejudice against Messianic Jews in Israel. That would be a very welcome sign. And of course, the founder of the Bible Block Party, uh, Dennis Avi Lipkin, also a good friend of ours here at Israeli News Live, he's appeared here uh, several times in the past in interviews, uh, says here, uh, Israel's Messianic Orthodox Jews are coming together to form a brand new political party to run in Israel's upcoming elections. According to the party's leader, Dennis Avi Lipkin, the Bible Block Party was created to represent both Jews and Christians in Israel. The party will have on its list an event number of Jewish and Christian candidates who understand either we hang together or we hang separately. The candidates will represent Jews who are Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, or Secular from all ethnic backgrounds. The Christian candidates will be Protestants, Catholics, Greek Orthodox, Ameri uh, Armenians, Ethiopians, and of course Messianics, Lipkin explains in a video. Uh, and of course, that is something we would really like to see. I'd like to just click on this real quick to see what Avi is saying here. They're Let's marching together in Jerusalem. A Judeo-Christian political party called the Gush Tanachi has been formed to represent both Jews and Christians for whom the two most important commandments are love the Lord thy God and love thy fellow as thyself. Two commandments on which all human civilization is based. The party will have on its list an even number of Jewish and Christian candidates who understand that either we hang together or we hang separately. The candidates will represent Jews who are Orthodox, Conservative, Reform, or Secular from all ethnic backgrounds. The Christian candidates will be Protestants, Catholics, Greek Orthodox, Armenians, Ethiopians, and of course, Messianics. Bible-believing Christians, who are 8% of the voting population in Israel, have no representation in Israel's legislature. This is wrong. This is going to change. Jews and Christians together are going to cement an alliance, both in Israel as well as globally, to save Israel from destruction, as well as Judeo-Christian Western civilization and democracy. Vote Yud so anyway, this is what Avi is saying, and of course, uh, it will be interesting to see how this goes over, because there is a lot of persecution amongst the uh, believers of Yeshua, the Messianic community in Israel, especially from uh, a lot of the, uh, the ultra-Orthodox uh, groups there and political parties there that have even tried to ban them from the country, revoke their citizenships, etc. So it would be an open uh, invitation to see how that will work work out and uh, and of course when he starts mentioning the different Christian groups there will it include Palestinian Christians that would be something I would be very interested in knowing so I have to try to see if we can get Avi on uh, to talk about that very issue uh, moving on over as well I do need to uh, apologize as far as to uh, Mark Bills now Mark has not asked me to do this personally, uh, and as, if he's reached out to me, I have not seen an email from him as of yet. Uh, but I do want to clarify something here. We did a video recently. I believe it's the video, the video about uh, uh, the, the great sellout. Now that's actually on a private setting as of right now. But if that's the one I'm thinking it was on, I had mentioned that I believe that Mark had actually studied 
under Rabbi Riskin at the Noahide Center in Jerusalem. And from what I've been told, that was not correct. Now, I made that comment because of the fact that I knew that Rabbi Riskin, which is on Mark's uh, own um, website here, as you can see right here, Rabbi Riskin is one of his uh, guest speakers there at his center. And of course, Rabbi Riskin is the main leader of the Noahide Center in Israel. And I had made the assumption, and I, I apologize for that, that Mark Bills was, had actually trained there uh, under Rabbi Riskin. But uh, nonetheless, I know that me and Mark, we don't agree on everything uh, for sure. Uh, I do believe that the Talmudic laws are something that are definitely being uh, upheld in Israel. And of course, Talmudic laws such as the Noahide laws are being uh, pressed upon American civilization as well as other countries around the world. And as this is something that I would really greatly appreciate seeing from what I have heard in comments that have been made to us that Mark was very upset about this is that he would at least make that public stand himself that he is against the Noahide laws being uh, incumbent upon American citizens. Uh, because I've told you guys before, if I make a mistake, I will definitely come and correct it. I am not above uh, making errors in this life here. And if I do it, I will correct that type of a mistake. So I stand corrected on that. But I am asking Marbells to make a stand as well, because this is something the uh, uh, Rabbi uh, uh, Menachem Schneerson's birthday is being celebrated in this nation every year uh, during Passover. And uh, of course, it's under the education bill that they have slipped in this law, the Noahide laws, uh, that is to be incumbent upon American citizens as well. And just recently, the Congress has passed the anti-Semitic bill, which if it was just a bill that was uh, regarding uh, to speak against, uh, you know, like a hate speech against the Jewish people, I wouldn't be so much a problem for me. But when it comes out to say that you can't tell the truth about what happened on 9-11, and it's a bill that uh, you can't tell the truth about uh, the conspiracy of some of the elitist Jews that were complicit uh, in the uh, Holocaust that worked with the Nazis, when you can't speak about things like this because you had faced jail time, then we've got to make a stand for what is truth. And I ask for Mark also to make that stand with us then on these types of issues because we need all the voices we can get. And as you guys know, I sit there and I recently spoke about uh, how that Yeshua, if you want to talk about anti-Semitic, he would have been the most anti-Semitic guy of his day based on the current definition of laws, especially like in this one right here, he speaks about the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 12. He says, Oh, generation of vipers, how can you be evil? Speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment for by their words, they shall be just Justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now he called them a generation of vipers. And uh, he's speaking directly to the Pharisees when he says this here. And of course, in the Hebrew Matthew, it is the seed of vipers is what he calls them there. Now, oddly enough, and when you come, if you happen to be coming to the conference here in Orlando this Saturday, starting at 9 a.m. there in Orlando, Florida, uh, which you can check that on our website, we're going to be going deeper into this subject here because there was an infiltration amongst the Jewish people back during the days of Yeshua. And I've already traced that out in pretty much depth before, but you're going to see for yourselves exactly and I'm going to give you just a little touch of that now, what some of the, some of the Jewish people of today, now this is not all, all Israel by no means, there, but there are those in rabbinic circles that are teaching some pretty wild out outlandish doctrines uh, that only seems to confirm what Yeshua was saying years ago, that they were a generation of vipers. And of course, you got to remember, there were a lot of Jews that were believing that he was the Messiah. And there were some that were just neutral at that time, or as Paul would say, they were blind, but they were blinded for your sake. 
all right? But right here is a good example, and this is from the book called The Two Trees and the Serpent by Professor M.M. M. Uh, Neenan, all right? I want to show to you what this... Uh, uh, this man actually says here, just to give you an example, it says here, Rabbi Geoff Dennis, noted teacher of Kabbalah, is professor of rabbinic literature at the University of North Texas. Rabbi Dennis writes, the serpent is man's helper who provides illumination. All right, when Rabbi Michael Leitman was interviewed by CNN Larry King, Leitman asserts that the serpent is the Jew's angel of help. We should be grateful to the serpent for his help. He says, Rabbi, the serpent is the angel of help. He should be grateful to the serpent. Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsberg says that the positive snake represents the epitome of good and, and adds the Messiah is referred to as the holy snake. You want to talk about blow your mind away? You're going to be blown away. No doubt about it. So anyway, these are the things that are going on here today, friends. We just want to make some of these things uh, known to you. And again, Mark, I apologize, my brother. Uh, but again, I'm calling on you to make a stand in against the Noahide laws in the United States. Because the Noahide law, although they seem to look like the Ten Commandments, when we get to idolatry, under the interpretation according to the Hasidic community of the Chabad Jews, and according to the fact that they come directly from the Talmud, all right, so they're coming from the Talmud, and the law and idolatry would cause those believers in Yeshua to be beheaded for believing that Yeshua was the divine Son of God. So it's time to make a stand. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, no, I, did, I already took it down. Anyway, blessings to you, and we trust this is a blessing for you as well. Don't forget, if you want to come to the conference, those of you that may be tuning in that don't know much about it, IsraeliNewsLive.org. Go to our website there, and if you look right there across the top of the screen, the coming Persecution Orlando Conference, March 30th, that's this coming uh, Shabbat on Saturday there. Uh, you can just click on that. It's a it's hyperlink. Thanks to Brother Gary for fixing that for us. It'll take you to it. The address is right there, Embassy Suites by Hilton here in Ultimate Springs, Florida, which is just outside of Orlando. Uh, you can either, it tells you the price is in there. There's a little discount for people, uh, three or more, uh, if you're coming as far as a group. Uh, and you can donate online, which is really the best way to do it. And, uh, and then that way there, we can secure your seat immediately. If you're coming and you're going to pay at the door, we need you to make a comment inside the comment section here that you're going to pay at the door. And then we will respond to you that we have a space available for you and you can pay at the door. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoom with Israeli News Live. Shalom, shalom. In a world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace.